¿Qué tal Juan amigos? ¿Cómo están? Yo soy Juanma y bueno pues como pueden ver estoy desde el Unboxing Toy Convention con dos personas maravillosas que bueno pues ustedes ahorita los van a conocer así es que vamos a empezar a saludar Hi, how are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm really good and how are you? Just fine, good to be here Great, ok, tal vez ustedes no saben quiénes son pero ahorita se van a enterar I'm telling them that maybe they don't know you but that they're going to know who you are. So can you please let them know who you are and what you do with Hasbro? Yeah, so I'm Stephen Gilbert. I work on product development and marketing for Star Wars. So we take the phenomenal products at Marca's, make sure they get on shelf, get out to you guys by the time you need them, and then that they have the marketing they need in order for them to sell at shelf. <laughs> Great, so we have the marketing part, but also we have the designing part. How are you, Mark? Just fine. Uh, I'm Mark Boudreau. I'm the senior principal designer on the Star Wars team, and I've been very fortunate to be able to work on Star Wars for the last 42 years. 42 years, so that means that you've been involved with practically everything from Star Wars. Well, I certainly have been a part of the team for that long. <laughs> There are many, many people who have contributed over the years, uh, very passionate fans, uh, that we wouldn't be able to do what we do without them. Yeah. You know, and it's like, I've been very fortunate to be on the team that long but there have been many engineers and marketing designers uh, all coming together to make Star Wars happen. Okay, I, I think that is a big uh, challenge to, to be part of the Star Wars uh, family. I mean, there were some people that started that progress or that, that uh, the process like years ago, but now it's up to you guys to keep this working. How is it to, to, to do it right now at this 2019. I mean, it's, I don't wouldn't call it so much. I mean, it is a challenge, but it's also awesome. I mean, you take something that started 42 years ago and is still here now. You don't see that type of longevity. So while it is a challenge, I mean, there's a built-in fan base. There's people who love this, people who are excited for what's coming next. And we're excited to be able to deliver products to really help them enjoy that, collect it, and be able to live that on and be able to hand that down to their kids and kind of keep that lineage going, kind of build a collectorship. I mean, it's much in the same way. It is in a way like, like a family. Like everyone comes in a different point to kind of keep that lineage going and kind of keep the family going and kind of build on that strength and that heritage. And we're just happy to be able to be some of the ones, some of us longer be, but around from the beginning and some of us coming in a little bit later, but also being able to deliver that joy to, to fans. I mean, you're responsible for the new generations. You know that? I mean, it's like you, you're, you, have, <laughs> you have a toy that has been on the market for 42 years yep. and it's still alive. How, how is that even possible? Well, I think it really comes down, it's a tribute to the story. Yeah. And it is something that it's generational and it's been being passed down through the generation. It's almost an heirloom. It's, it's, it's the parents, now that parents are getting older, they're passing it along to their kids. Now their kids are getting older. They're starting to have children. So now it's a third generation, fourth generation kind of, kind of a thing. And I don't know, it's, this story is just something that everybody could relate to. It was very comfortable. Uh, you felt very at home with that story. Uh, you can relate to the characters right away. And you grew up with them. So you felt their pain. You felt Luke, went, oh. Luke's kind of whiny sometimes, but you understood his pain. He needed to get out of Dodge, you know? And it's like, or Tatooine as it might be. But, uh, you know, I think it really is something that people could relate to. And I think that's a tribute to Mr. Lucas's storytelling. So what is the real challenge about bringing the toy line to the new generations? Because, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm 40, 40, <laughs> I'm like 40 years old and, uh, <laughs> yeah, let, yeah, 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 let's put it that way. And uh, I'm, I'm a huge Star Wars fan, but I've, I've been a Star Wars fan since I was like six. And now you have kids around five, six years, and they're also fans of Star Wars, and keeping the line on the market is really hard. From, from the uh, marketing per, uh, perspective, how, how hard is that? I mean, right now, there is a challenge now, because as we know, 2019, the landscape's much different than the 70s. We're competing against video game franchises and that. There's a lot of people and a lot of brands and shows and entertainment that's, they're fighting for kids' attention. But 
there's still the magic that is Star Wars, and I think there's always something to the fact that if your parents liked it, and then it's something that nece- that you want to replicate and something you want to like. There isn't a vast difference between kids then and now. Like, if you can hook them with magic, and you can kind of get them like believing in the story that is Star Wars, it is great. I mean, obviously there is a lot that they're kind of into now, so you are fighting for attention. But I think when you have a strong story with a great heritage and the great magic that is Star Wars, it makes it a little bit easier than. If you were somebody who's a completely new franchise of entertainment and you're trying to come in and you're trying to fight for attention, you have a much bigger haul than we have to do. Okay, that's from the uh, merchandising and yep. stuff. What about the toy making? I mean, designing. You had the five, uh, like the, the vintage line, and now you have really, really nice figures out and, and shapes and everything. How hard is that to keep the line working? with the requirements that the kid is asking you to to add to the uh, line? Well, I think the kids are always going to look for something that grabs their attention and keeps their attention. So we work very closely with Lucasfilm to see what are the key beats of that vehicle or figure in its story, and then how can we might, how might we be able to expand that? Uh, We have We do we do do some off camera development sometimes. We also do hidden reveals, where we where we add features to complement an existing vehicle design to add to the fantasy. So I think Lucasfilm is allows us to adapt their the sort of the hardcore essence of the figures and the vehicles can be adapted to the new generations of kids, uh, to whether it's scale or a different price points. There's there's a lot of different things that we work with Lucasfilm about, and we, we oftentimes will come up with ideas and we'll bounce uh, those ideas back and forth between not only internally, but with Lucasfilm, and we kind of make, sort of evolve that story into something that we can move forward with. And from a technology point of view, uh, there's been a big difference in how we do our sculptings, how we do our vehicles. We have the 3D capabilities, you know, that we've had for a while, but each year it improves. The technology allows us to do different things. Uh, The digital technologies allow us to do the photo reel, you know, which we weren't able to do just a few short years ago. So, We're trying to make sure that we can also adapt to the changing technologies that will allow us to do things, I won't say better, because each time we do a line, we're doing that line to the best of our ability. So it's hard to compare a product that we did today versus five years ago, because they are different, but they are the best that we could have done. Uh, But we do allow that, that technology does allow us to advance, you know, the tech, the, uh, advance the sculpting, ad- advance the way we create things. And it makes things a little bit easier. Okay. Now, one more question, and this is my final one. And, and I think that I've been wondering this since I was really little. How do you work together to bring the line to the public? I mean, you're designing the toys, but you have to make those toys work for the kids, but you also have to make those toys work so he can do what he has to do. So how, how, how do you do that? I, well, it starts even further before that where we kind of loop in with Lucasfilm. So we kind of figure out what entertainment's coming. We also know we have existing entertainment we can tie into. And then knowing what entertainment's coming and what we're looking for, then we kind of build together the, the line and what we're going to look for. And collaboratively, we come up with what vehicles those are going to be, what figures those are going to be, what features they're going to have, and we work together. And then we kind of go working towards kind of developing whatever that marketing plan is going to be to sell those while knowing it, their parallel path developing the products and we tr- I mean our design teams are phenomenal our engineers are phenomenal we know they're going to create the best possible product it's going to be the best representation of whatever is being shown in entertainment so like Mark said this analogy before and I'll steal it and he might go back to it but it's like we're both everyone's on the same path so we might split off but eventually we're going to link back up up here we just have trust in each other that by the time we do link back up we're going to have done what needs to be done to keep moving forward beyond that point so that's cheating right he knows from <laughs> No, what he said in advance. No, what he said. What he says is true. It, it really is. Uh, we re- we rely on Lucasfilm as a great partner. They pro- they're able to provide us the information that we need. 
and that's what allows us to start the process. Uh, it's important from a, you need to know kind of what the, what the story might be, and that helps Steven out, but we also need to know, okay, there's an image of a character, but does he do anything, or does she do anything? Okay, this vehicle is really cool, does it do something memorable? Yeah. Something that we can really kind of sink our teeth into? I mean, everybody wants a new Millennium Falcon, right? Not only is the Millennium Falcon a vehicle, it's also a character as well. It's temperamental, it doesn't care. Pound on my walls, I'm still not gonna work. You know, it's, and you know, it's like, and it doesn't, you know, the engines won't start at the worst possible time. Here comes Vader and the, and the snow troopers gonna blast the Falcon out of the sky and it won't start. You know, so those are all those really, which seems to be little insignificant details, which really turn out to be huge and people remember those things. So we hope that when the directors and the designers on Lucasfilm's end, we hope they're thinking about it from a kind of a toy perspective as well. Because a beautiful ship on the screen that doesn't do anything is just a beautiful ship. Yeah. It doesn't necessarily translate into an awesome toy. And that's what we're hoping to always be able to do. Guys, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Steven, thank you. I appreciate it. No, it's my pleasure. And Mark, thank you so much. No, you're welcome. You're welcome. Glad to be here. No, it's been a pleasure to, to be with you guys. And amigos, muchísimas gracias. Ahí tienen sus eh, comentarios acerca de todo este universo de Star Wars y los juguetes, cómo se hacen, cómo se, se sacan al mercado y demás. Yo soy Juanma. Allá está Bernardo en la cámara. Estos juegos, juguetes y coleccionables desde el Unboxing Toy Convention 2019. Nos vemos en la próxima. Adiós. Gracias.